Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to our channel. Today, Douglas McGregor discusses the situation in Ukraine on August 7, 2024. Today, we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. First, he talks about the summer area. According to the updates that we received on August 7, there are at least two or maybe more realities that we are currently living in. For example, according to Russian sources, more precisely, according to Gersheimer, the head of Russian army, and according to the person who is currently in charge of the special military operation from the Russian side, the operation in Kursk region will be completed within the defeat of the armed forces of Ukraine and reaching the state border. Gerasimov said that the meeting with Putin. Also, he added that the advance of the Ukrainian army forces deep into Russian territory has been stopped, Chief of the General Staff of the Russian Army Forces, Gerasimov. 54 military vehicles, including seven tanks, have already been lost by the Ukrainian army troops. This is the reality that Russian officials are accustomed to. However, we can observe a completely different situation when we discuss unofficial resources, sources on the ground, various mappers, and other military experts. Gerasimov's statements can be used to change Russia to Ukraine and we will still be entirely correct because the situation in the Kursk area is extremely grave. We do not claim that Gerasimov is incorrect. We're not saying that the situation that has been described by different blackguard military expert is correct. Currently, nobody knows for sure what exactly is happening here. The only thing we have is a number of geolocations, number of posts, number of reliable or unreliable posts and so on. Let's discuss everything we have today, and let's every single one of us make his own decision about whether to believe or not and to understand what exactly is happening here. Before we start, we are starting with the post of the Russian military expert, Rybar. He stated the situation on the ground that took place on the ground, let's say, in the morning at the beginning of the 7th of August. Let's discuss what he was talking about. First of all, the pro-Russian source reported that, as a result of offensive operation, the Ukrainians managed to establish complete control over several villages. For example, the Ukrainians captured the village of Abahavka. Also, the Ukrainians captured the village of Nikolaiva Daryana. Also, according to information we have from the same source, the Ukrainians captured Daryana and the Ukrainians captured Nizhny Klim. Furthermore, that was the first time, let's say, cities and villages were captured. Later, the Ukrainians managed to improve their positions further and to establish complete control over Pokrovsky, Tolstiluk, and Lubimovka. Obviously, this is significant progress to the armed force of Ukraine. Later, we got updates that the Ukrainians captured Sverdlikova and Lebediva. The Ukrainians were also moving in the direction of Suja, more precisely, in the north, in the direction of Suja, in the direction of the village by the name of Kasatia Lona. Now, let's move further. According to Ryber, the Ukrainians also managed to establish complete control over the village by the name of Nova Ivanovka. This is it. Of course, as for these geolocations, as for this number of villages, we still haven't received even a single geolocation that can confirm, let's say, control over half of these villages that were described. But we have some geolocations that certainly confirm additional Ukrainian progress. Let's discuss this in details. If you remember yesterday, we were talking about this small intersection of the road and the tree line, a bloody intersection for the Ukrainians, because the Ukrainians managed to reach this line yesterday by the evening of the 7th of August, and they managed to enter the territory. There is a very powerful and rich network of fortifications that were built by the Russians. The Ukrainians captured this territory. They abandoned their Amut vehicles, and the Russians attacked this territory immediately. As a result of attack, some sources are saying that the Russians were attacking this territory with Iskanders, missiles, other sources are saying that that was Tarnada S. Anyway, as a result of a strike, the Ukrainians lost everything there. We are talking about armed vehicles, of course. We are talking about ammo depots that were created there, but of course, not about infantry, most likely. As a result of this attack, the Ukrainian infantry, the Ukrainian soldiers managed to survive, at least most of them, because, as you can see, once again, from this angle of view, there is a very powerful and rich network of fortifications that were built by the Russians during the previous months. Of course, 
There are lots of places where the Ukrainian soldiers can hide. Obviously, this is obvious. This is the situation. Later, we got the video on some rope calculations. According to sources, according to people who are making all these geolocations and calculations, as a result, out of this attack, the Ukrainians lost up to 10 vehicles. The question is, can we judge whether the Ukrainians managed to capture this territory to dig in deeper and establish 100% control over it? This is a very simple question, and we need to answer it, whether we can trust it or not. If you ask my opinion, I'm telling you, yes, the Ukrainians managed to reach the line. The Ukrainians managed to dig in deeper. Furthermore, the Ukrainians managed to bring engineering equipment. For example, the Ukrainian engineering machine and the Ukrainians who were walking, let's say, along the street, like along this line, as if they were walking along the street somewhere in New York, were very relaxed and they were trying to evacuate armed vehicles, strikers, most likely those that were damaged or destroyed as a result of Russian Tornado S or Iskandar strike. Once again, the main important words in this sentence, engineering equipment, were redeployed by the Ukrainians, according to, let's say, this video, to the line of combat contact. Obviously, we can draw a conclusion that Ukrainians feel pretty safe in this area and that the line of combat contact and the front line are much farther from this point. So yes, the Ukrainians managed to reach this line and dig in deeper. Most likely, the Ukrainians managed to move even further. During the previous night, the Russian sources published a lot of videos of how they were bombing and attacking the Ukrainians using a significant number of weapon, artillery forces, aviation, and so on. For example, in this video, we can see how the Russians were bombing the Ukrainian forces in the stronghold that we've been discussing right now. That's along the intersection of the road and the tree line. We can recognize this, let's say, strong code by its shape. A few seconds later in the same video, we can see another explosion. The Russians are saying they managed to attack and destroy the Ukrainian convoy. I would like to draw your attention to this small forest. This is small forest, and this is very important because, based on this forest, it become possible to discover and recognize the place. If we return to the map, we're going to find this forest in this point. This is the forest. That means that this video confirms that most likely the Ukrainians managed to reach the village of Alexander and Leonidova and capture them. Of course, we have to, we will, and we will adjust the map, and it's time to start adding yellow color because the Ukrainians did capture significant territories, and most importantly, the Ukrainians are moving further. Now, let's talk about additional reports from the same area. Russian civilian who was trying to move in the direction of Suja, but he reached the, let's say, checkpoint in the area. If you have access to the map, you will be able to turn on the sound, and you will hear what he was saying, but he was talking in Russian. What was he saying? He said, oh my god, there are rifles on the ground. There are bodies of dead soldiers. Then, after these words, he turned his car back and start moving back in direction of of, let's say, city, maybe Karanova or maybe in direction of Viktorovka, because he turned here and start moving in this direction. This video confirms that some Ukrainian soldiers managed to reach this area, and as a result of short battle with a Russian checkpoint, most likely the Russians suffered losses and were forced to fall back. We don't know for sure, of course, but maybe this is exactly what happened. Furthermore, right before we started making the video, we got probably the worst next update for the Russians here. It's like worst nightmare for the Russians. According to information we have, the Ukrainian army forces entered Karanova and Suja, two border district centers of Kursk region. 